Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Ardagnos. Uh, thank you for being a dear friend. Thank you for swearing me in. Thank you very much to all of you. I want to begin by introducing my family again. I know that they've been introduced before, but they mean so much to me. Uh, please uh, acknowledge my wife, Ileana, and my son, Theo. My mother, my mother, who is here, and there she is. We have, yes, my mom. My aunt, Patricia, my mother's sister, who actually is the ringleader in helping orchestrate this amazing event. And her son, Jeremy Forsyth, who is also like a little brother to me. And my two younger brothers who are not able to be here, Darren Mercurimi, who's in Afghanistan, and Dr. Paul Mercurimi, who's in Germany right now. Uh, I want to thank the uh, large contingent of dignitaries, my friends, and elected officials. I want to thank uh, all of you uh, for being here, for being longtime friends. Uh, I want to thank uh, the House of Union Labor, uh, who I know uh, we've been close for many years, and I know many of them are here in the audience. I want to thank uh, the, the leaders within the Sheriff's Department and the law enforcement uh, that are here, and I want to thank community and neighborhood advocates and certainly the leaders of nonprofits who are fighting for the social justice that we all care about. Most of all, I want to thank all of you for being here with us today. It means a great deal to me, Ileana, and Theo, and my entire family. I know better than anyone how hard you all worked to help us arrive at this place here today. I saw it day in, and I saw it day out. Believe me, we did, in a very spirited effort, of us making sure that we would prevail in our race for sheriff. I want to thank you, everybody, for your tenacity uh, in being able to accomplish what many had also deemed is almost next to impossible. And with that drive, I would not be here as the 35th sheriff of the city and county of San Francisco since statehood in 1850. You are true friends, and I am most grateful. Thank you. I also want to say that I am sorry that a cloud hangs over what should be a very special day for Ileana, me, and the entire, in my entire family, and all of you who worked so hard. They and you deserve better. But you know what? Clouds break and the possibilities shine through. This is why I ran for sheriff, because I was inspired for many years before I decided that I would announce my candidacy for sheriff by the man who's been San Francisco sheriff for well over 30 years, Sheriff Mike Hennessy, who's been able to signal, who's been able to signal what it means to be thoughtful, what it means to be thorough in protecting us but what it means to be innovative and certainly demonstrating his ability to be probably the most innovative sheriff in the United States. This is what motivated me to become sheriff because I believe that we all, that we all want the same justice and that we all want to serve with distinction. So today marks that changing of the guard and the badge has been passed. Sheriff Hennessy completes a career that is among the most distinguished in the history of our city. I know that he's been acknowledged already, but it would make me feel very good because I know how shy he is that if we all stand in applause of Sheriff Mike Hennessy. We will 
miss you, but I have your cell phone. <laughs> and I also been reading those articles about his first beginnings too. How many escapes were there in your first year? And <laughs> so I understand about new beginnings, but it is such a remarkable testament to Mike Hennessy's record that every single candidate who ran in this recent race for sheriff vowed to promise to build on his 32 years of legacy. I certainly trumpeted that as loud as I possibly could. And yet I made it very clear and that I wanted to distinguish from the very fact that I do not pretend or portend to want to fill or can fill Mike Hennessy's shoes. That's impossible. What I do believe is that you have my solemn declaration that I will build on the amazing foundation that the Sheriff Hennessy administration has certainly developed over the last 30 plus years, which is why San Franciscans have been repeatedly proud in wanting to elect Sheriff Hennessy eight consecutive times. Yeah. And to paraphrase another, Sheriff Hennessy is the type of leader who walks softly and carries big ideas. That's where he and I were simpatico. Many times where I felt frustrated as a supervisor inheriting a district that had a very high violent crime rate when I took office for District 5 back in 2008, I sought the counsel of many, but in particular it was Sheriff Mike Hennessy, because I knew it wasn't just a police response or a first responder response, but it was going deeper. And it was about going to the core that certainly propels people to commit crime and commit crime in a repetitive way that doesn't seem to have any end, especially for a city like San Francisco who professes to try to establish such great innovation and liberalism, but yet we don't always deliver in the way that we would like. Indeed, I dare say that even during the election for sheriff, because there hadn't been an open race for sheriff in over 30 years, Concern that there had been very little attention even during the election because we were not a top of the ticket race like the mayor's race and the DA's race, that we would garner the kind of attention that I think that was so central to the issues that needed to be, that needed to be uh, expressed and that we needed to project to re-educate people what the sheriff's office does. Uh, and like here today, I was even afraid like during the election uh, itself that we would garner uh, little media attention, but I think we took care of that. <laughs> the sheriff's department, <laughs> the sheriff's department that I walk into is vastly different than the one that Mike entered over 30 years ago. To begin with, it is immensely better in every respect from the high quality of women and men who serve in the department to the department's recognition of what it means to unite criminal justice, public safety, and the power, and the power of redemption that has taught us in San Francisco and that has taught every other county in the state of California who had initially scoffed quite often at the programs that had been initiated by Sheriff Mike Hennessy and his administration in ways that now many of the same counties, conservative, have come full circle to believe that there is merit in the exact programs that they also need to replicate. That's validation, and it legitimizes the exact course that we are on. It also demonstrates the need that there is no deviating from the course in which I had campaigned on, which is why I vow to make sure that we build and we build effectively in preparing for the new era of criminal justice in the state of California. Now, I believe that it's more than just sloganeering or bumper sticker responses that speak about how we must tackle recidivism, repeat offender rates. I do believe in the power of redemption and I believe that an infrastructure has been well established but not well established enough and not supported enough in the city and county of San Francisco in how we will be able to make the kind of profound change that I deem is necessary and that I know that you would agree so that we are able to successfully answer the other vexing problem of public safety, and that is those who keep repeating their crimes. This is something that I feel very strongly that we must not ever let up on. And yet it was in the unassuming way, and yet it was in the unassuming way 
Probably Mike Hennessy is one of the most understated elected officials I have ever met. Certainly I believe, and I think many in our, uh, among my colleagues and peers would agree, in the most unassuming way, Mike Hennessy was able to forward the kind of programs that have gained national and international attention with groundbreaking efforts that birthed or flourished like RSVP, Roads to Recovery, Sister Cover, Nova, Five Keys Charter, among others, he's been able to demonstrate that with that very tailored approach, then this is exactly the way we must go into the new era of how we orchestrate our response to public safety in criminal justice. And I guarantee you, I will not let up and I will not uh, ever yield from that particular position. And that is why that when I won the election, that I did not wait until today, and I had not planned to wait till tomorrow, uh, to begin my administration. I want to thank uh, the civilian managers uh, and the uh, sworn personnel and command staff of the Sheriff's Department for welcoming me in immediately after the election where I have held over three dozen meetings and briefings, quite long. I don't think they were all prepared for as many questions that I had. Uh, but yet, uh, what was stimulated was the kind of discussion that at least I think uh, painted exactly where we want to go and where it is that we want uh, to continue from the Hennessy administration. I want to thank everybody. Uh, in the Sheriff's Department for welcoming and demonstrating the utmost in professionalism in helping us chart exactly, I think, what our goals and objectives shared will be in us moving forward. I did not create a transition team like many do when they get elected in preparation for their taking office. It's a little too flashy for my taste at, that, at this time. But what I did was just prepare internally by talking to people who I've known of and got to know, who I think are effective and talented and skilled in helping us deliver the kind of results that will make you and the people of San Francisco all proud and the people of the state of California take notice. I bring to the table, I bring to the table a particular agenda and a menu of change that I want to share with you uh, in this uh, synopsis of where I believe we need to go. And where I come from is my experience, not just as a supervisor of a district that has had its own challenges over many years, but somebody who dearly loves San Francisco, who I believe is probably one of the most amazing cities on planet Earth. The first, the first is that I will move forward with a team of transition working groups. There is no end game except the fact until we believe the job is done. The work that we have done internally amongst key staff in preparation for us to be getting to get a baseline knowledge of where we're at and where we're gonna go should now be shared with people from outside the Sheriff's Department so collectively we will answer the larger questions together. For example, for example, it is daunting to know the fact that 12% of the population of the United States is African American, and yet nearly 50% of the population in the US prison system is African American. The stark reminder is underscored that in San Francisco, the African American population is less than 6%, and the African American population in our county jail is well over 50%. What this suggests is that while there has been great focus, and I know as a member of the Board of Supervisors and as a representative of a district which really was the epicenter of the black community, well known from the days of the Renaissance of Fillmore, that we have a great deal of work we must do. And while there has been great lament about the lack of access to capital and opportunity in itself, it is time that we recognize that it's through the prism of the criminal justice system that society is going to need to pull together, led by, I think, the kind of institutional support that certainly deals with the sober reality that it's not just about the out-migration of blacks from San Francisco going to cities 
that are less costly, but the very fact that many within the black community in San Francisco, especially adult males, are going into the criminal justice system. One out of every 15 black adult males are in San Francisco's county jail. And with this particular statistic, drives home the very need that about out-migration of San Francisco comes also the very need to recognize that while the Jim Crow laws of yesteryear were certainly abolished, I also believe that they've been redesigned and repackaged within the criminal justice system. And so, with this trend that I feel that we have no grasp on, I think San Francisco is an opportune time that we pull together with community and city hall. I think it's important to realize that while we have grappled with hit and run strategies, hoping something would stick, especially through the eyes of job creation, job training, job placement, now we've seen that one of the main levers of job training and job placement, such as the utility of the redevelopment agency, which is now next to becoming a thing of the past, was one of the original levers that would help deliver that particular job training and job placement for people of minority communities, eliminating that particular agency, and the debate certainly is being well heard in Sacramento and throughout the state of California, also suggest absent of that particular asset, however one may deem, puts the position that much more in a distressed place so that nonprofits and agencies like Goodwill and Jewish Vocational Services, Walden and Haight-Ashbury Clinics and everywhere else will now have to certainly absorb the brunt of helping a community that is uh, certainly weakened. This is something that I feel very strong about, that part of the working group, in addition to of us addressing populations that are disproportionate within the criminal justice system, is the population that we certainly have to help provide the answer. How are we going to get them jobs? How are we going to get them access to housing? Now, as I was parting as a supervisor, I wanted to test our limits, and I wanted to certainly gauge just where that political will is there in San Francisco. Yes, I may have exceeded what one may consider to be slightly legislatively orthodox by suggesting that we give tax, tax credits to the private sector who hires uh, people who are ex-offenders uh, so that they would get jobs. I appreciated the, I appreciated the obvious fact that this, in terms of ex-offenders, those formerly incarcerated felons, is a very unpopular population, and it's not easy for uh, a politician to want to grab hold in answering this larger question. But the dilemma is, is that I see no other solutions that are on the block. I do not hear of the kind of strategy and I do not hear the kind of tactic that presents the change that I'm hoping will answer the larger question of job placement and job creation. I fear, unless that there is that collective support marshaled towards our ability to ameliorate what I think is going to continue to be an escalating situation of a hemorrhaging of not just the black population, but populations such as maybe a Latino population and others who are certainly growing in the incarceration rates in the prison system in the state of California and in county jails throughout the state of California, that it is incumbent upon us to be able to pull together the partners of the criminal justice system with society and people who demand more of us and us being able to respond, and certainly City Hall. And that takes us to the next working group that we will begin to tackle, and that is the question of mental health. On the question of mental health, the statistic has been very, very clear, whether you're looking uh, through the prisms of conservative or liberal think tanks, 
that with a prison population in the United States, nearly 2.5 million, one in 100 American adults are in prison uh, in the United States. Nearly one out of five of those who are in prison suffer from a severe mental disorder, schizophrenia or bipolar or a combination thereof. And yet Medicaid funding does not provide for the long-term inpatient treatment at all for us to address uh, this growing reality. And with the state of California certainly grappling with a cash-strapped economy, hoping to pin this cycle on our ability to deliver at the ballot box for progressive taxation, which of course I support, then I want to make sure that we cannot certainly put our eggs in all of one basket. And that I think it's important to us, very, very important to us, that even as citizens and residents and business owners and legislators, district supervisors, who want to answer that chronic question about why is somebody homeless who looks like they need more than just housing and a job and a bath, why is it that they're constantly on our street? that in and itself that we must answer, I think, the larger question of what it means to get the kind of meaningful help that is necessary for a mental health, for this particular population. <laughs> to do this, to do this, uh, I will, as I've already met with members of jail, uh, of the psychiatric unit, is that I will work to expand. Uh, jail health psychiatric care uh, in the city and county of San Francisco, recognizing that state hospitals, that state hospitals, uh, mental health hospitals, have certainly shuttered their doors or, yes. or refusing prisoners uh, who are requiring that level of specialized care. It now shifts and transfers this disproportionate responsibility to the people of San Francisco, and to expect police department or law enforcement to be able to satisfy the answer uh, and the distress that causes everybody uh, by somebody who seems to be not within control of their means uh, and their faculties, then I think it's important that the sheriff's department and I believe adult and juvenile probation and all the other partners in local criminal justice answer this question, starting with that we believe that a seat at the table of the community partners amongst the criminal justice system, where one does not exist through the Department of Public Health, be included for mental health and psychiatric needs. And that takes us to the next of us addressing the core of the uneven bridge of pre-custody and post-custody programs. Because of the dynamic, dynamic efforts uh, and accomplishments by Sheriff Mike Hennessy and his administration, uh, and by so many others who've tried to recognize the need that if you go into jail, that it certainly makes a great deal more sense, especially to address the concerns of public safety by when the time somebody leaves jail, that we occupy that inmate's time as, as constructively and productively as possible. Because I believe that it is self-evident, and the test has been well, I think, uh, demonstrated that we are not winning the battle against recidivism in reducing recidivism if we simply think that we can turn a key and walk away. That does not work. And that's been well, I think, ex well demonstrated by the current Sheriff Mike Hennessy, well, past Sheriff <laughs> Mike Hennessy, uh, and others who are now getting this. Uh, from around the country. So I look forward to working with adult and juvenile probation, the district attorney, the public defender, the police department, Department of Children's Youth and Family, the, Her the Human Services Agency, uh, the mayor's offices, the fleet of nonprofit CBOs who are struggling to stay afloat and being able to manage what is a growing population with less resources. Uh, and certainly in the time that we've used in the last six weeks in preparing for this particular place, I've met with the Secretary of the Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. Uh, and I've said that I'm proud that San Francisco's jail system is one of the only counties in the state of California that is undercrowded. Uh, 
And we discussed the possibility of what do you do with unused space. Mind you that we're on the edge of our seats because of Assembly Bill 109, state prisoner realignment, that we must be prepared for the influx of prisoners that come in, but based on the smart choices of risk assessment in the partnership way between us, adult probation, and DEA, and PD, and others, that I believe that we will still remain with unused space in the Sheriff's Department. So I want to posit this notion that if we want to significantly address the uneven bridge of pre-custody and post-custody, because when somebody is in the system getting the attention they want, and then they are prepared to enter into society, but when society is receiving them after that they have been released from incarceration, and they don't have the job, they don't have the housing, they don't have the proper tools for integration, then statistics have show that within six months, they will reoffend. And because of the recidivism rate in San Francisco being at 65% right now, and prisoners in the state of California being at 78%, then I believe we have no choice but to man better of ourselves so that we are able to answer this core question, which would be nice if in that unused space of the jail system, perhaps, we would use a Delancey Street type model so that whether it would be inside the jail system that would remain with a vertical, that would remain with a vertical attention and accountability so that those who are getting the attention are not treated through an HMO-like suggestion by the time that they get out and the people who are certainly being treated, inmates, are not really clear on who it is that they're dealing with. These are possibilities here, and those possibilities are made because inside the system, something beautiful was started. The first high school, charter high school in the United States, was created by Sheriff Mike Hennessy with the support from our friends of the teachers, United Educators, and others who took a chance on an idea that no other county or jurisdiction in the state of California took a chance on. And the notion that using that time in a way that's constructive, using that time in a way that builds that confidence and that skill value so that by the time you leave, you're able hopefully to reintegrate into something better, has also now shown us what works and what doesn't. I will, through those transition team of working groups, bring together those people that will address the need to now expand from Five Keys Charter so that we realize the value of returning vocation into the side, inside of the jail system so that those, believe it or not, where we would like to have seen, I think, more vocational programs and opportunities, uh, that those are opportunities that have not been present but they will work for, and using City College as a way to help expand as a way to help expand on that pre and post of custody is exactly what we will do. And on immigration, on immigration in itself, uh, the fact is I couldn't have been more proud of Sheriff Mike Hennessy for demonstrating the sensible response to what I thought was a very reckless uh, program by Secure Communities in its effort uh, to uh, certainly deport uh, without questions asked. And his administration speaking to what became a harbinger for many others like him in the United States to uh, question, I think quite legitimately, where the federal government is going. San Francisco is a very sensitive and caring place for its immigrant population and undocumented population. We believe in due process. We believe in that there are values that need to be held within the criminal justice system, and those values cannot, should not be devi deviated. And sometimes local, state, or federal government doesn't always line up in their thinking, which is why we must continue to proffer our point of view in the most pragmatic way possible, but marshal the kind of will that I think is necessary so that people understand that we want to certainly be sensitive and that we want to be good caretakers for the people who live here in San Francisco and yet who cross over into the criminal justice system. Now, um, there's no question that uh, over the last several years, over the last several years with the implosion of the national economy and the gasps of all of us seeing the high uh, incidence of evictions from foreclosures, uh, that uh, there seems to be a real wrestling of what it is that we uh, 
in San Francisco can do. But unfortunately, we are somewhat incapacitated because of how federal and state law is designed uh, in order uh, to empower us to address those that need help. By court order, the sheriff is responsible for facilitating evictions, even if in our heart and mind that that might be wrong. When I saw that there had been sheriffs in the United States who have actually resisted against evictions or have denied against evictions, I've called them up. I've talked to their offices and to other sheriffs in trying to understand that are these heroics certainly coming from a place that I believe uh, can be sustained. And you know what? 100% of them had told me that while that, that was the right instinct to certainly react, it was an unsustainable action because of the absence of law that does not support the sheriff's ability in order to protect those that they would also like to protect. That's not any different here in San Francisco. So it is incumbent upon us to bring together those who know best in how we can speak our minds and certainly demonstrate with the level of, with the level of fortitude of what it is that we can realistically do. I am not into hollow heroics. I am into meaningful change. And I have been told by people that it may be a good idea for us to just declare that we're not going to evict. But yet, when I remember then Sheriff Richard Hungisto, uh, who was a friend of mine uh, and who I knew, uh, well, telling me that in the days of where he had resisted against the eviction of I Hotel and then only to be put uh, into incarceration and then only have to follow orders several days later, that in itself paints the picture of what we are up against and law has not reformed since then. It's important that we continue uh, to recognize the value of the excellence of the sworn staff within the Sheriff's Department. Uh, we have a great deal to be proud of because I know that the police department, which is the primary responder in public safety, but there's a sheriff's department that has uh, approximately 850 men and women uh, who have served with distinction that are sworn personnel, many who I'd met in my days in going to the police academy, many, I believe, who certainly serve with great honor on behalf of the city and county of San Francisco, are also eager and willing to help the police department in any way possible to augment any needs, to assist with any needs in a primary public safety way. For example, in something very basic, uh, in something that has been tried, but it had not been continued, that I would like to see, and I have met with Mayor Lee and Chief Sir about this very idea, the return of station transfer units. And what that means is that the 10 different district stations where the police department certainly apprehends and arrests somebody, they're the ones responsible for the uh, detention and the booking of those particular prisoners. This is an immensely time-consuming effort. Let us do it. The Sheriff's Department can ferry certainly to the 10 different district stations, and we can be the ones that certainly save the people uh, a lot of money, a lot of time, uh, and help alleviate, I think, the police department from being able to certainly perform this function. Sheriffs do not get paid the exact same as the police department. I know that's another issue, and we will certainly do what we can to support their need for, uh, for fair and just compensation. But at the same time, recognize that the city must, that there is an underutilized asset in the Sheriff's Department, whether it's on special events, transporting prisoners, or perhaps when there is a deficit in being able to respond, I think, to patrol functions where people need help, especially as we grow out Treasure Island or Big Guns Point or wherever. Let it be known that the discussion should not certainly be one off the table, but on, so that we are able to discuss what it means to enhance our response to the larger objectives of public safety. And I am so pleased you know, to see that there are members within the uh, education and so many educators that are here today, community. Uh, I want you to know that it is daunting that 55,000 uh, people enter the San Francisco City and County Jail System every year, and that is a number that almost mirrors the exact number of students that are in San Francisco public school. 
knowing that those two numbers almost mirror themselves, sends the exact signal of what we must do through the educator community of working together to make sure that young people, and we're beginning to see a growing class of young people from 17 years old to 27 year old, repeat their offender rates in a way that should take notice. And this is hard when we see headline news when crime is down. Because when crime is down, it lulls people, I think, into a false sense of security, in a sense that everything is being taken care of. But that is really what is epicenter to what we're all about here today and why I ran for sheriff. That keeping the issue of high recidivism rates, keeping the issue of the causes that continue to fuel that particular reality is not something that we will ever let off the radar and something that we will continue to make sure that is on the minds of both elected officials and the people of San Francisco. The job of sheriff is not to lock up people and just throw away the key. Mike Hennessy and his administration demonstrated that, demonstrated that quite soundly. In effect, not helping people return to the community from which they come from shall continue to prove that finding a job or housing or sound integration to family and community is adding a sentence of time already served. San Franciscans are a proud people. Our city has been a beachhead and has been a bellwether for so many watershed causes and reforms. I've grown up with many songs that proudly remind me of why I love San Francisco. Eric Burden's San Francisco Nights, Stevie Kenzie's Come to San Francisco, Where Flowers in Your Hair, and certainly, I love that song. Um, I play it all the time for my son. <laughs> it's great. Uh, and of course, part uh, harking back to the uh, movie and the musical of San Francisco, Clark Gable film of the 1930s, and the song San Francisco reminds me certainly of the premise of the song, open your golden gate, let no stranger wait outside your door. This continues to speak, I think, to the lessons of who we are today. The dream of a city that lets no stranger wait outside the door to a better future is a dream we need to share with those who are not only strangers, but in particular our neighbors and people within our communities who have stepped on the other side and implicated themselves in the criminal justice system. We must know what it means to receive them by the time they come out of the criminal justice system and not treat it as if it's a problem in Visitation Valley, Ingleside, Sunnydale, Bayview, Hunters Point, Mission Soma, Western Edition, Fillmore, or any other neighborhood that seems to be the routine neighborhoods uh, that are the ones assigned and shouldering this particular problem. The fact is, is that a lot has been done to try to address these inequities of programming and service delivery, but we have a lot more work to do, which is why I believe in addressing that uneven bridge and why I believe we need to respond to the San Francisco song of not forget anybody. And it's with that that I arrive at this particular place that I want to thank everybody here for being so patient, uh, especially over the last few days, uh, in being so supportive to me and my family, uh, in being just uh, so uh, present, uh, so present uh, in our need to venture on and venture forward, that uh, with great humility, I want to say how much uh, I really, really am honored to be here in front of you. And I want you to know that I worked and we worked very hard to get here. And even over the last few weeks, uh, and in particular, uh, last few days, there are tests built in to these experiences. I only guarantee you that I'll be a better sheriff for it. Thank you. San Francisco. We have gathered in faith and with hope that the good, that the righteous, that the just, that the love in us is greater than the evil that is in the world. We have gathered with faith and with hope, trusting that our best instincts for the city and county of San Francisco and its future leadership in the electing 
of Ross Mercurimi for sheriff will find the peace and the prosperity that the Creator intends for all of our good works. Join me now in stretching out your hand. Stretch out your hand in prayer, in meditation, in contemplation, in whatever way you do it in your tradition, and ask that the Creator would bless San Francisco, the Sheriff's Department, and the administration and family of Ross Mercurini. And now as the journey continues, in my tradition we are taught to bless that journey in a peculiar way. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you and yours peace. Amen. <laughs>